All right, let's talk a little bit about Newton's laws for a system of particles, specifically his uh, second law. Um, force is equal to mass times acceleration, or the summation of the forces. Um, so what, we, what we're looking at here is imagine two particles or two billiard balls, you knock one into another. Um, let's say they have the same mass for now. So we started out with forward motion, you would expect after the collision maybe that we'd also have some forward motion, right? Um, one of the balls is going to move and depending on their masses, different scenarios will happen. We'll learn about that in this next unit coming up, linear momentum. But um, basically uh, the whole system, if we look at the center of mass, is still going to be moving to the right. Um, and any, any collision between two billiard balls or two objects, um, the center of mass is going to stay in the same spot and move off together as if it was one. Um, so what we're going to say is that the net force or the summation of the force is equal to our combined mass of capital M times the acceleration of the center of mass. Um, when we do this, uh, we also have to say that all the external forces are acting through that center of mass. Um, we also have to say that big M is the total mass of the system. Um, we also, we, even though we have multiple particles, we are looking at the acceleration of the center of mass. So that represents, if we were looking at the group of particles as just one object. So this, this makes problem solving easier. Um, and what we get are three equations for our three directions. We get the net force in the x direction is equal to m times the acceleration of the center of mass of x. The net force in the y direction is equal to that combined mass times the acceleration of the center of mass of y. And the net force in the z direction is the combined mass times the acceleration of the center of mass of z. Okay, um, now what kind of things am I talking about here? We are talking about systems with more than one mass, for an example, billiard balls or pool balls, right? Billiard balls. Um, when two balls collide on each other, only internal forces are acting upon them. There's no external forces at play. And what we see is that if the center of mass was moving forward before the collision, the center of mass is also going to be moving forward after the collision. Um, we could extend this to a solid body. Remember, we found methods if we have a uniform mass distribution we could take a solid body like a, a prism or a cube and extend these principles to something like it and we would say that we can just treat the center of mass as the point that's accelerating so if you had maybe a cube or something it has some center of mass. Well, that's where we would point mg going down at. Um, if any forces were applied, they would go through that point. Um, an interesting one, and I'm gonna try to find a good homework problem for this one, is exploding bodies and not human bodies. Exploding bodies. By this, I mean like a, maybe like a mortar shell. Let's say you shoot something up from the ground and it's taken some parabolic trajectory but right at the top it splits into two pieces so we have 
the back piece and maybe the back piece falls straight down and the the other half of it if it broke evenly in half is going to then go twice as far as it initially went to get to its max height so um let me draw the other piece here's m1 and m2 when they were all one piece m1 and m2 so we can use this principle for what we call exploding bodies um think of uh i don't know even a shotgun right if all of the shot were to actually leave the barrel in a grouping and didn't spread and even if they do spread the center of mass is going to represent um, that distribution of masses as if it was just one particle so we can say that all of these masses together is just can be represented by one mass um, and the next one that your book talks about is like a ballet leap And in this case, <clears throat> what they have is the ground. And then they have, let me turn the page so I can try to copy the drawing. They have a ballerina sticking her leg out. Here's your torso. And her arms are kind of down, and here's her head. We're going to say the center of mass is somewhere right around here. And if we look at the path of the center of mass, it has to be a parabolic trajectory. Um, she leaped through the air off the ground. And if we look at each different location, we'll see at the peak of the trajectory, the ballerina raises her arms up. And then she lowers them back down before she comes to the ground. And what this is doing is keeping her head at the same level, making it look like she's floating through the sky. So here's our path of the center of mass, and here's our ballerina. And the center of mass is gonna be the same for each. Um, that's just my drawing, but it, it's gonna stay in the same spot. Or um, it's gonna, sorry, sorry, sorry. The center of mass changes depending on your mass distribution, right? So as you lift your arms up the center of mass moved up a little bit as she brings the arms back down it comes back down towards her her pelvis or so so started out down here ended up down here at the peak of the projectile it moved up because she moved her arms up okay <clears throat> so we had the fact that we could write the vector of a center of mass as m1 r1 plus m2 r2 plus dot 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 all the way out to m n r n and if you remember that was all divided by the combined mass let's throw this on this side over here like that and i'm going to take derivatives um taking a derivative of the position vector is going to give me velocity, so I'll get m1 v1 plus m2 v2 plus dot 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 plus m n v n. And guess what? We'll take a derivative one more time, which will give us m1 a1 plus m2 a2 plus dot 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 m n a n. And on this side, we have the acceleration of the center of mass. And this is a vector. And this is all still multiplied by m. Right here, we had the velocity of the center of mass. OK. Um, what we can realize is that each one of these is equal to its own force, right? So this is F1, this is F2, plus dot dot dot, F sub N. So from this, um, we can find 
the acceleration of the center of mass if we just add up all the forces and then divide both sides by this mass right here. So it's a, a trick that will help you find the acceleration um, and sample problem um, 9.03 can help you understand that concept if you want to take a look at it.